one of the things uh, like one small thing is that japanese slogan of yours which which click the right note so uh, if you can if you could just <laughs> tell a couple of fun things maybe great 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 you rightly said like i think india is a, a diverse culture and still inclusive uh japan is a non diverse cul- culture still non inclusive mm. uh you know i i really it it makes me think what what exactly is going on here why why people are so hard on each other why they don't want to be like helping each other well there's a funny thing uh, those people who go to japan as a tourist or those who go to japan on a short term kind of visit or work kind of they actually look all goody goody things about japan for them japan sounds very beautiful people are so helping but uh, as i have lived in japan for a longer time uh, i have understood the the real problems that are subtle like their subtle problems which are there inside the society uh, so i say like the japanese society has a different place value and it has a different face value okay. what is there on the face is actually not there on the place uh it's it's a very what you can say hard nut to understand in fact after living even after living in japan for 25 years i don't think i have understood the japanese people so particularly their omote and ura kind of thing uh, uh which is like uh, what they are saying is not actually meant and what is actually meant they are not saying so you have to catch the meanings <laughs> uh, so read, just read for between the lines. yes read between the lines so just for my, our audience i'll give one example mm-hmm. like one day a japanese person came to my home and and that person said oh it's isn't it hot kind of so i said oh is it hot i said uh, uh is it hot so i didn't realize that the person is saying to asking me to put my ac on okay <laughs> well if it is an indian or american i would i think they would say can we can you please put on the ac isn't it yes where the japanese won't say like that so uh, that's a very typical thing about it so i think uh, and and so less is written about the japanese uh, even in english so it's uh, it's very difficult to actually learn about them so in fact uh, i just recently wrote my biography in japanese Mm-hmm. it was published on 26th of jan mm-hmm. and uh, the english version are you going to ask it separately <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the english no, version the me. english version will is uh, due in in probably march or april okay. uh, i think uh, i i have actually put forward some things about the japanese people uh, when people read it they will l- understand more uh, about japan of course that book is not enough i will try to write more but as of today there is no such literature i have come across mm-hmm. the way i have written so i hope uh, people like it and people uh, it becomes a tool for the people to understand japan more now coming back to your question like uh, um, the jargon which i said in my campaign was gikai wo ata tamete maerimasu gikai wo ata tamete maerimasu so it's like it was a very cold night and i was like shivering and and then i said like although it is cold outside i, I will make the assembly warm so which meant like again mm. the japanese style of saying mm. like i will have much more discussions and debates and new topics to the assembly which which in japanese would mean that i would make the assembly warm mm. warm means having more discussions and dis- uh, debates kind of so that was the meaning uh, and um, uh, while japanese society is closed i think there is a set of people which badly wants change the japanese politics is monotonous there is nothing new that is coming up and no new ideology so i think there is a that that set of people who wanted some new thing to happen i think those were the guys who voted for me probably one of my guess is that uh, see in japan the vote percentage is hardly 40% 60% of voters are not going to the booths so i think probably those were the guys who majorly voted for me uh, they wanted a new face a new thought a new idea uh, and and hopeful and i think that worked out so even in my next campaigns like i think keep thinking like what should be the next stages i should 
go through mm. what should i commit to the people what exactly are the people wanting but sometimes i i feel at a lack of philosophy i really sometimes feel a lack of philosophy because you know the way we think about philosophy in india uh, it is not at all thought about in japan they are into a quiet day to day routine life and uh, sometimes i feel lost like what exactly are these people up to what is their end goal how can they be really blissful and i sometimes really don't understand i have no answers so probably you know that is one of the hard things uh, i face while being in this social role what is that exact thing that will really make this country happy i have no answer i really have no answer so like bhutan has a happiness uh, quotient index yeah yeah so i don't know probably you japan could... is very low yeah japan is very yeah. low yeah. within the oecd countries which contains 37 38 countries right now uh, japan is the second worst okay uh, in terms of happiness index so yeah. it's not happening while superficially they might look like this but i think inside they are like this they're down even like now i work as a principal of a school and i do morning exercise of morning exercise in the sense i stand in front of the school gate and i do a good morning session kind of to all the students i think almost 20 30% student don't respond with a good morning hardly one or two students out of 1100 students say good morning first to me every time i am saying good morning then they respond mm. but hardly one or two students will proactively say good morning to me i think that's not really good sign even at the offices there is a lot of harassment a lot of discrimination gender discrimination and other kinds of discrimination so uh, um i really some feel sad about those kind of things and i would like to bring a change So you know, I see, I see two totally, totally different countries in Japan and India. Japan, you go, you will see infrastructure-wise everything like this. You see any Japanese, they are well dressed. You won't be able to guess who is rich, who is poor. Everything is so well set. Those who have jobs, they have their own earnings. Those who don't have jobs, they are supported by the government. you will not see beggars in japan so all in all looks like an advanced country but when you see inside i feel people are at a loss of philosophy and back to india you will see all chaos you will see beggars on the streets but this time also i came to india with my secretary and i'm saying like see these beggars they have such a big smile on their face so i think that smile index of india is definitely very high mm. even when we sit down with our friends having a normal course of food we will be always full of laughters sit down with the japanese there will be no laughter mm. so uh, that that's a, that's a big change mm. and uh, probably those are the things you ask me what i miss yeah i think these are the things i miss mm. there is no open talk mm. well uh, on a different note i miss the the cart food here mm. the street food uh i miss the historic monuments i miss the vibrancy means uh, uh, you know i'm here this time for last 4 5 days and the kind of the quality of sleep i have got is really very high i'm feeling it so these are the things i miss but uh, uh the other thing on the philosophical part is a big hole there which if someday if we are able to patch it up probably on india side we have to have different changes on japan side we have to have different changes if we have we are able to do it probably world will be more beautiful <laughs> yeah, right